Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name's Jamie from Wonders Games, today we're doing an unboxing video. This parcel definitely did not come from Amazon, but it did put a happy smile on my face. So this contains, or well, I hope it does, Tarkin 3, which is now my most expensive Amiga game in my collection. I've been buying C64 Amiga games pretty much all my life. I absolutely love buying them, and I love owning them. And this one was £143 on eBay. Yes, it's a lot of money, and do you know what? I don't feel one bit bad about it. I put £150 bid with a few seconds still to go, and I won it. Delighted, superb, absolutely over the moon I was, and it happened on a vlog which I recorded, which is on vlog six. Oh, did I win it? Did I win it? Did I win it? I've won it! Woohoo! It's a lot of money though. Wowzers! Blimey! I've just won it. I've won it. I've won it. And I know what you guys are thinking. How much? Well, we put it this way. This is now my most expensive game I own in my collection. Now also in my collection I have Tarkin 1, this is actually the original one I bought in 1990 which is Kix. Absolutely superb, I played it at absolute death, in fact this is the one I bought second. I love Tarkin 2 so much that a week later I went to town with my dad and bought this one. Tarkin is a 1990 video game developed by Manfred Trentz. It was developed for the Commodore 64 by Rainbow Arts and was ported to other systems later. In addition to concept design and character creation, Trends programmed Tarakan on the Commodore 64. Now I also own a mint version of Tarakan 1 as well on the Amiga, and again, absolutely stunning box, stunning artwork, stunning game, brilliant. And uh, I'll do some close-ups of it, but yes, delighted. And that alone was £90. Being a collector is not cheap. The series started in 1989 on the Commodore 64 with a demo level of the full game which was released in 1990. Tarakan became popular due to its high technical achievements, demonstrating graphics which may not be believed possible for the C64. Tarakan was developed mainly by Manfred Trent and published by Rainbow Arts. Tarakan was released for the Amiga, Atari ST, Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum and CDTV. Factor 5 handled the Amiga, Atari ST and CDTV versions while Amstrad CPC version and ZX Spectrum were developed by Probe Software. Now somewhere in my collection I do have the Tarkin 2 Kixbox version, but unfortunately it's not here. I think it might be in my mum's loft, so sometime in the future I have to go and get it. But of course I do have the big box version as well, and again it's mint. And this one is actually in a plastic sleeve, so what I must do with that one is buy one for that one as well. But again, super brilliant game, came out in 1991. Tarkin 2 The Final Fight is the second game of the Tarkin series. The game developed by Factor 5 was released in 1991 for the Commodore Amiga. This version was finished before the C64 version, but Manfred Trent cites the C64 version as the original design. Tarkin 2 was released for the CDTV, Atari ST, Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum, and later for DOS. It was also released for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis and Game Boy, rebranded as Universal Soldier. Now, Tarkin was released on so many different systems, including the C64, and as well as in Snares and Mega Drive with different titles, Super Tarkin and Mega Tarkin. The only Super Tarkin I've played, and that is a tremendous game as well which we're going to long play, hopefully in the future. But anyway, Jamie, we need to complete the trilogy. And I have just the box here to do it. And I'm really, really hoping this is as mint and as immaculate as it was on the eBay post. I hope so. Now, I have to admit, I didn't play this game in the old days. It took me quite a few years until I finally played it. Now, that's not to everyone's taste. Some people liked it and some people didn't because there were some big, big changes. But take nothing away from the music. The music is absolutely superb. But of course, the biggest change for me was the lightning, which was replaced by the grappling hook. Now, I have to admit, the only times I played it, it took some getting used to. But once you get used to it, it's a very, very good game. Now, when I won this on eBay, I was absolutely buzzing. Now, I didn't pay for it immediately. The first thing I did was actually message the seller, asking them to pack it very, very well. And they have packed it very, very well, but I paid it not long after that. So yes, a lot of money spent, but I don't feel one bit bad about it. Now, of course, it's a big box version, not a medium-sized version. Absolutely fantastic. There we go. It looks absolutely mint. Brilliant. I have to admit, there was a lot of worry. I kept thinking, please, please be in good condition. Please, please don't be crushed. 
Please, please don't be torn. Looks absolutely brilliant. Superb. Token 3 includes 15 huge levels, all media graphics, mode employed, 28 tunes and 88 sound effects in Dolby Surround, 4 difficulty levels, 50 frames per second scrolling, multiple weapon systems and power-ups. Brilliant. This box is absolutely mint, there's not a single mark on it anywhere. Now I have to admit, these prices are going up all the time. I've not always spent this sort of money, but over the last sort of few or four years, I have been. But I would only spend that sort of money on boxes that I know are absolutely fantastic condition. And this is. And one thing that amazes me with these games. One disc. Absolutely amazing as well. And the book. Absolutely immaculate and superb artwork once again. Token 3, instruction manual, the ultimate arcade experience. So we'll be playing it for this video. Do you know what? I've learned something new about the game already. It's not called a grappling hook, it's called a plasma rope. Press the fire button to keep it pressed. Tycoon can now aim with his arm. Push the joystick to the left to rotate the arm to the left. Push the joystick right to rotate the arm right. Release the fire button and the plasma rope will shoot off. If there is any wall or ceiling, the rope will attach to it. While hanging on the rope, push the joystick in the direction you want Tycoon to swing. Push the joystick down to lengthen the rope. Push the joystick up to shorten it. There you go. It's called a plasma rope. I've been calling it grappling but for years. Another thing I've learned about this guy is the gyroscope. It's not called a gyroscope in this one. It's called an energy wheel. If you duck and press the fire button, Tycoon will turn into an almost impenetrable wheel of energy. In this form, you can only lay mines and throw bombs in the air, but in certain situations, the wheel is very useful. If you want to transform back, just press up. You have limited wheel time, which is marked by the line underneath your energy indicator. If your wheel time runs out, Tycoon returns to his normal form. Tycoon gets new wheel time every level. It's not called a gyroscope. Now every month on my channel I do a pickup video. Now bear in mind this is my one and only purchase this month. This is my pickup video.
we go, Titan 3, awesome game, copyright 993, Rainbow Arts, designed by Factor 5, published by Renegade. Okay, this other game is a Token 3. This game is a Token series with initial design for the Mega Drive Genesis and later followed an Amiga port converted by Kaiko and Neon Studios under the title of Token 3 Payment Day. However, despite not being individual, the Amiga version was one of the first commercially released in 993, published by Mega Arts in Germany and Renegade in the rest of Europe. The Mega Drive version did not have a publisher and stayed unreleased from Spring 993 until 994 when Data East took over the worldwide distribution. Data East itself released the game in North America and contacted Sony ImageSoft for the game's distribution in Europe. And that was difficult to do while playing this game. But this game is brilliant. This is the only Titan game on the Amiga that I've not finished. Now, of course, in Titan 1 and 2, we have Lightning. No Lightning here. We have this, which for years I've been calling a grappling hook. It's amazing what you find out when you read about it, but it's actually called a plasma rope. Now, if you haven't played the game much, it does take some getting used to, but once you've mastered it, it's very, very handy. Use it to get to higher grounds because your character can't jump very high, certainly not as high as you can in your previous games. The game is brilliant and the music is absolutely top notch. Right, avoid the flames, we're going to use the plasma rope again. Now this game is timed. The Mega Drive version of the game was re released on Wii Virtual Console Service in Europe and Australia on March 22nd, 2008, and on April 14th, 2008, in North America. Right, down we go, we pick up some energy along the way. Start the game off with three lives and three spark bombs. If you use a spark bomb, you press the space bar. Or if you're using a two button joystick, use the two button joystick. Right, not far into the game, we have our first boss. And we have a good weapon. There you go. Now, like Tarkin, boss battles doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the level, it'll just carry on in this case. Now, these ones you can't kill, it's never rubber to a ball. So, wait till they. Unravel from a ball and then attack them. I mean, a, a, a smart bomb should do the trick as well. Right now, up there is actually a extra life. Extra lives are in secret places, and most of the times you need the grappling hook to get there. Or the plasma rope, Jamie. That might be something I've been saying quite a lot today by mistake. Right, we've got one up. Also, pick up crystals. There you go. Fantastic. And when you get to the end of the level, it will actually tell you how many crystals you've got. How many you've missed, how many lives you've got, and how many lives you've missed. And there's so many. Even these early stages. However, I don't know where all of them are, but then I am trying to read off a screen. Which is proving rather difficult. Okay. Tarkin can select between three major types of weapons by collecting three different flashing icons. Each weapon can be upgraded three times, and if you lose a life, your current weapon will be downgraded one level. Okay, we have the multiple, a powerful spread shot that is very effective in the open fields. Laser, this one is good for tough enemies, including boss battles. But that is probably my preferred one. And also get the rebound, which is probably my least favourite, which is the one I've got at the moment. Very useful for enemies above and below Tarkin. The rebound shoots off and walks on walls. It's good, but trouble is, if there's enemies in front of you, it's not so good. But... That's exactly what it says on the tin. If anything's above you or below you, then yes, it works superbly well. There we go. This game is timed. All time games are timed. It's not good if you're streaming it. And I have streamed this game a few times. We can pick up energy. Right, we also get homing missiles. In addition to those three weapons, Falcon has a homing missile. Collect the icon and it will be shot off automatically with a normal shot. It searches for the nearest enemy and goes for it. As you have it. Right, watch out for the flames, Jamie. Good time in there. Can get crushed. Time is to get away. Your energy bar is down the bottom right. Okay, not far away from the end of this level. Not up there is another life. Couldn't get, I was too busy trying to shoot this enemy. There we go. Oh, it's still there. We'll use the plasma rope. Oh, it just got away from me. Never mind. Never mind. You win some, you lose some. Okay, boss battle. Even though it's not technically a boss battle, but this is the end of the level. Let's keep the enemies at bay. Now, extra containers. Shoot containers to find extra weapons and power-ups. In some areas, you can find additional rights. 
or in this case, find digital lies and then miss it because you're too busy trying to do something else. There we go. Time, 308 seconds remaining. That's the end of the first level, and I gained one extra life. Okay, on we go. Such a great game, this one. One day, I will finish it. It has 15 levels in total. The last time I streamed this, I did get a little bit lost, but you do need to use that platinum rope quite often, otherwise you do get yourself stuck. And it's very easy to get yourself stuck. And there's a few levels on the previous game which I always got lost. I'm sure you guys know what ones I'm thinking about. Alright, again, avoid the flames. Every time you wait for flames, it's draining your time, and your time does not replenish at the end of each stage. Once you reach the end of that level, then yes, it will actually replenish. What you expect? This is the level I do sometimes get lost, but I think I now know where to go. So, time is ticking away. So much to do, still. Right, now that's actually where I need to go, but let's pick up things along the way. It will help for points. Now I'm assuming we do earn additional lives from score, but absolutely not sure. So we're going to go that way again and use the grappling hook. Okay, use the plasma rope. Makes it so much easier. You cannot jump that far. Right, okay. You have to find your way through 15 levels. First is the bio mech laboratories of the machine and later the deep dungeons of the alien queen until you're able to confront your arch enemy. I haven't got very far, I have to admit, I haven't got far. I need to get a move on, time is getting low. Elevators and flames, not a nice combination. You can't jump nowhere near as far as you could before. Oh my lord. I don't think we jump that far. I might be wrong, but I'm not going to risk it for a biscuit. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Yes, you can do it. Okay. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt his abilities. Don't further than you think. You really go for it. Right up there, it's got to be a secret, isn't it? It's got to be a secret. Bingo! Have some of that. Now we're down. You can also jump on their heads, which you could do in Titan 2, but not in Titan 1. Right, we've got to get a move on. There we go! Superb! Right, time is low. Now each level is broken down into three stages. Gotta get a move on. Now you also do get three continues. That one goes down, that one goes up. This is gonna go down to the wire, I think. I have a feeling this is gonna go right down to the wire, which is very well known for me. Right. Extra life. Boom, boom, and pow. Right. Good for extra life, but that's used up more time, but it's fine. Enemies don't spawn, which is amazing. 74 seconds. How close is it going to be? Six lives. It could possibly be five very soon. We're going to have to go like the clappers here. No more statistic reading. Right, boss battle. Okay, we might just do this. As time stops, at the moment it has. But then this boss is building itself. Right, now this one, you've got to go from side to side, using the plasma rope. Now that time has actually stopped. Brilliant. Now you've got to shoot the eyes, and the eyes only. The trouble is, they switch from side to side. Which means you've got to use the plasma rope. Watch out for the mouth. There we go, boop boop pow! We've got 43 gems, 6 lives, and this quite a few. There we go. Flash of the screen. 
Diamonds collected 43, missed 44. Large collected 3, missed 5. Score 37,655. Okay, I'm determined to find all the lights on this level. Let's go. Okay, first life can be found up here. Again, we use the plasma rope. Alright. Should be a container. Pow, we have one. This is where we find life number two. Here we go. Okay, we found a secret entrance here. Through the wall. Which brings us to our next one. Which is there. Okay, up here is we find another one. Again, without the plasma rope, we wouldn't have got it. There's another one. <laughs> wow. Up there. There's another one. Wow. <laughs> okay, energy is really poo, but I think I found another one. Down here. Bingo! Ah, uh, this one. I've got seven. Seven out of eight. Okay, next level. This is a tough level, but what makes it difficult is water. The water is never a nice thing, but in later levels, it is a nice thing because your character can swim. But falling to a bottomless pit is an instant kill. Now we have water that comes from the ceiling. I don't think the drips harm you, but the big flows of water will harm you. Now sometimes it's quite difficult to tell what platforms you can stand on and what ones you can't. And this one, again, you do need that plasma rope quite a lot. Now as I've found out, you can spend a lot of time looking for the secret lice and the secret gems. But that does use up a lot of time. These bubbles take so many hits, even with a multiple. Oh, no, look at that. The player has to complete numerous large levels, searching for secrets and pick up an enemy to shoot. To do this, the player can pick up three different upgradable shots, a multiple spread gun, a more powerful single directional laser, and a rebound, which fires directly up and down and travels along floors and ceilings. It's a bit like our type. While the main weapon firing is weaker, you can also get into a wheel mode by pressing jump while holding down on the D-pad, as long as the player has enough special energy. And use a rope. In will mode, the player is nearly invincible and can lay mines to explore previously unreachable areas. A similar mechanic that is the Warp Ball from the Metroid series and the Spin Dash from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Right, that's used up a lot of time. Okay, now we've got to jump from there to there, which was testing his jump. Really, really testing his jump. Watch out for water. Now some of these platforms, they're okay to stand on for a little time, and then all of a sudden they go round in circles. So, some of the platforms are very, very weak. Very, very unstable. I have to admit, when it comes to lives on this level, I don't know where many of them are. So I haven't got much further than this. Now, if you're doing it on easy mode, then this level is actually the final level of that mode. So, we're doing it on normal today. But there's three difficulty modes. Right, now we're going into the water. Half of it is water, and half of it is not. But you can also fire underwater, and oxygen levels is not an issue. Not an issue at all. You can jump out of the water. And you go on here. The world is your oyster. Make your choice. Water or no water. Alright. Of course, it's never going to be easy in the water. There's going to be lots and lots of enemies. All of them can be dealt with. Or avoid in this case. <laughs> right, electric eels. You all know what they can do. The water also dropped from the top. It's just been demonstrated. Right, that's an extra life. Boom, boom, and pow. We have seven. Did lose a few just trying to read off a screen. As I've proved on many, many occasions, reading off a screen and playing is a difficult task. Right. How do we get up there? Doesn't matter, I'll go for it. Some areas are quite easy to find, but some of them are quite challenging to figure out how to get there. 
Right, the next boss battle actually takes place in the water. Now we're going deep, deep down on the water. Okay, now we're underwater and it looks spectacular. No oxygen bar is here. Now again, do you go for extra lives or do you go for finding the exit? In this one, you can get a little bit lost. Well, I can anyway. It's very easily done in a level like this. And it's very easy to lose track of time in a level like this. There's so much going on here, but I think I know where to go. I won't be looking for lights here. Now the boss battle on this level is an octopus. Or the squids. Don't think many enemies fire though. They just move around a lot. Uh, you can also find crystals, diamonds, gems, what do you want to call them, in the water. I guess you can't use the energy ball in the water. I've never actually tried. No, you can't. Right, now I don't like the rebound, but the rebound would be good here. Okay. Now if you go too far down, you can actually be killed. The screen won't go that far. And your character can't go beyond that far. These enemies take a lot of hits. I mean, certain sections is that the case if you go too far down. Ooh. Right, 256 seconds remain. I haven't found any additional life yet. We're on boss territory. Okay, we're on the octopus. Now, don't think he actually fires at you. He just moves around a lot. You've got to shoot his tentacles in a certain order. That one first, then the one at the back. Again, time has stopped. I don't recall that being the case in the previous games. It's nice they do it here. where a spread shot would be brilliant. Right, now we go around to the back and shoot his other leg, which you can't shoot from the left-hand side. He doesn't actually fire at you. Not once. I'm struggling to see because my monitor screen is on the right-hand side of the screen. There we go. He's now official one-legged octopus. I'm not shooting the eyeball. Okay. What do we get? It's quite a minimal area. Again, I think the multiple is the way to go. There we go. Boop, boop, pow. That's some of that. That's the end of that level. Not a lot of gems, but I was trying to get there as fast as I possibly can. There we go. Diamonds collected, 13, missed, 44. I'm not proud of that one. Lives collected, 1, missed, 8. There's so many extra lives in this game. Okay, next level. This is difficult. This is very, very wolf child territory. And these platforms will stay there for a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden they'll drop. The problem is, there's a bottomless pit down there. And if you fall down there, that's an instant kill, but eventually you will make your way down there. But you've got to do it this way, not falling down there. Now, you do get enemies thrown into the mix, but you can use them to advantage as you get to higher ground by jumping on their heads. The problem is, I don't know 100% where I'm supposed to go. I've died quite a few times, as you can see by my lights. And there's not a lot of checkpoints here. If this jump was a little bit better, it would be easier. Right, there we go. Superb. Right, I've never seen this before. Absolutely not. This is tremendous though. Right, we have 600 seconds. Right, boss battle. Alright. Alright, it's this thing again. Okay, fantastic. Let's use some of these mega bombs, shall we? Not as powerful as the power lines. 
Oh, again, it looks spectacular. That's gonna hurt. You're feeling that in the morning. He's definitely faster than me. There we go, for the pal! I can't be hitting the level, that's really short. Again, I love the music. Right, energy is not good. Use all my smart bombs, and lives aren't good either. Right, can you jump on their heads? Yes, you can. See, this is where the lightning would be absolutely spectacular. That's what I tend to use. Use the lightning while you're descending up. Oh, another boss battle. Oh my lord, okay. Ooh. Right, every time he sees you, every time you go into the light, then you... Right, okay, then he fires at you. Now where? Do I take a leap of faith? Right, life. Bingo. Whoa, my lord! Okay. One day, I will finish this game. One day. Tarkin 2 was what the one I completed first. I actually completed on a live stream for the first time. Even though it isn't very, very close, and some of my subscribers witnessed it. Even though it was quite early in my channel. Is this another boss? Another boss? Oh, look at this one. Oh, okay. What a nice touch. It's a previous boss from Titan 2. He looks a bit worse for wear, but there we go. What a nice touch. I didn't know this existed. Yeah, he's um, been damaged quite badly from previous attempts. Doesn't look like his gun works, he just jumps around a lot. Weapon ain't great. You've got to shoot his head, like he did before. Again, it's a bit difficult to shoot, there's not a lot of space there. Right, is he dead for real this time? <laughs> Look at my energy! How poo is that? I named this level Boss Machine. Is this lots and lots of boss battles? Right, energy is maxed out. Fantastic. We've got another life. Fantastic. We've got the multiple. Fantastic. There we go. I haven't used the uh, personal rope much here. I do wonder. Ooh, okay. I did wonder. That didn't look like secret territory. Bouncing balls. This doesn't look like secret territory. Maybe it is secret territory, but it's not e easy, easy secret territory. Got a lot of life out of it. Got it. Power ups. Nowhere. Another one. Bingo. Alright. On the Whoa, my lord. Again, the lightning is very much needed here, as well as the power lines. To get off of it, you hold the fire button down. It gives you a little bit of a, a jumping boost. Alright, okay. Energy, yes. What the swinging ball. Again, the music is absolutely stunning. Okay. Again, the background. Ooh, life! Looks spectacular. We love a bit of parallax. Dime. Right, again, it looks secret territory to me. Yes. Oh, I can't see myself. I knew we can you. If 
Holy moly. There we go, there's another life. Right, now we get out of here. Right, you can't shoot those, but yeah, go for the chain. Or oh, no. Uh, right, okay. That took ages. Right, it... <laughs> Look, I'm trying to get out of here. Time is ticking away. Right, there we go. It's the guessing game here. There we go. Right, took plenty. Now, Factor 5 began to work on Titan 3 for the Amiga right after Titan 2 was released in 991. They had a working demo that had already been featured from the final game. However, around the time, the Amiga market was already in decline and together with Labour Arts, it was decided to develop the game for Sega and Mega Drive instead. The game was completely redesigned to the console and is co-developed by Factor 5 and the members of Kaiko. Development of what was already known as Mega Tulkan was finished in spring 1993, but Factor 5 was lacking a publishing agreement for the title at this point. Since Liberal Arts did not perform direct operations on the console business, Factor 5 had then to shift efforts into presenting the game to various Mega Drive Genesis publishers in hope they could sign a definite deal. A process that would end a whole year after when Data East agreed with Factor 5 into publishing Mega Titan in 994. Blimey, that went on a little bit too long. I didn't realise there was a boss battle going on, but there we go. So many boss battle in this game. Well, it's levels, we say, as I meant to say. But I don't have any Mega Bombs. Bring on. And she's poo. I don't know what it is, but it's destroyed. 238 seconds remaining. 13,700 points. Good pow! Still going. I mean, Tolkien games are everyone known for having lots of boss battles, but this is probably the most I've seen in one level. Okay. Again, another boss battle. Same as one we saw earlier on today. That homing missile is brilliant because you can sort of be running away from it, but you're still hitting it. There we go, another one! How many boss battles are there? It's still going! Though. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, I, I'm a big, big fan of these games. I always have been. Another boss battle! Right, this doesn't look good. This is like a situation from Robocop. I mean, not as challenging as previous games, these boss battles, but it's always a nice addition. I do like boss battles in games. Destroy the crane. There we go. That's gonna be the end now, surely. Brilliant. What a game. What a game. Diamonds collected. Twenty-four. I missed one single diamond. Collected six lives, and I didn't miss any. There we go. Score: thirty thousand five hundred fifty. Now this one sounds very, very like Zed Out, and of course, Chris Helsbeck did the music for Zed Out. I've got one up already. They love their alien sections, don't they? Again, it's very, very aliens. Now 
they can also fire while you're actually using the plasma rover. I wasn't aware of that. But this, again, level design is absolutely tremendous. And these games love their alien themes, don't they? Right, okay. So, energy's alright at the moment. We'll risk it for a well-earned biscuit. And it's telling me where to go. You know, it's fairly obvious where we need to go, but it's never going to be an easy task. They look like face huggers, and they've appeared before. But they do take a lot of hits, though. Right, we need our rope quite a lot here. There we go, attached to his face. I was actually hanging it on the end of his jaw. Now, they could be really mean here, those drips could have harmed you, but. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, you could have. They could have included evil acid drips. Jump is not the best, but this is really testing his pixel perfect jumps. You should really go on that edge. However, we're going to use the rope here. But that time is telling me this is a very, very long level. These sort of levels are. Now, there's a level like this in Tarkin 1, and that one I got lost so many times. And one time I streamed it on Twitch, back in my Twitch streaming days. And I used up all my life, I just couldn't find my way around. Trouble is, I picked up everything. So you couldn't pick up any additional energy, so I was always dying. Right, okay. What is that? Dead anyway. Power up, read laser, homie. Okay. Shield. I haven't seen much of that today. Right, I'm down. Okay. How much more footage do I include? That's the problem. It's not a long play today. One of the things I would love to change about this game, or all of them, should we say, is the time. Now, time in games is never a nice thing, especially if you're streaming them, but these games, you cannot pick up any additional time. And that would be brilliant if you could. You can pick up additional energy, and of course, your additional weapons, but it desperately needs a time pickup. That would be brilliant. Unfortunately, they've never actually put that in place. I mean, this, one, this one is very generous with the time, but what's worrying me is this is a world that contains three stages, and this is just the first stage. And your time does not replenish each time. Right. Ugh. Whoa, so many face huggers. You all know what they can do. Right, this, this, this... Yeah, that works. There we go! We're awarded! We have ten lives! Oh! Right, okay! Right, the arrow is helping a lot. I desperately wanted that in Token 1. That would solve a lot of issues, but I have long played both 1 and 2, but I definitely want to remake them. I love the fact it's telling me where to go. Super Tarkin did that as well. That's another game I want to try and long play in the future. This port of the Amiga rebranded as Tarkin 3 replaced the Roman numerals as the previous Factor 5 project had assigned. Right, next level. I was actually in the middle of reading some statistics, but I couldn't do it at a level like this. We're on the move. We've got to move with the screen. But some of the design of this level is 
very, very level 5 and 6 of Zed out. And the background is very, very catechist. Another tremendous game. Right. Now those electricity bolts don't harm you, but the sections we do need well-timed jumps. Special situations like this, because this is a big, big jump. You kind of can't jump that far. Watch out for the smoke. To make it a tad more difficult, we'll throw some aliens in the mix. Oh, blimey. Oh, blimey. Right, okay. Six lives remaining. Luckily, we've reached a checkpoint, but what is bad now is my weapon. It's poo! Oh, blimey. I'm just waiting for the smoke to go. It's difficult when the, the screen is moving. You get attacked by crazy aliens. Oh my lord! Energy. Like that. But yeah, I think it's best to try and focus. Oh my lord! On one weapon. While I'm keep switching. Slimy. I'm still going. God, blimey, that was tough. Still going though, that's what's worrying me. Oh dear. Energy, yes. I'm just gambling here, I'm just risking it for a biscuit. I can't see what's ahead. Oh dear. Okay, we're still going. The problem is, my monitor screen is taking up the right side of my screen. I can't see a lot of it. Right, crystals. Okay, we're still going. That alien ain't going anywhere. Lights. Life! Boo boo pow! Have some of that! Five lives! Boss battle! Right! Bring it on! Some of that! And that! The weapon! And they can destroy! Weapons. That'll certainly make it easier. Ah, you little rascal! Okay, there's more to this than you think. Yes, you can destroy his weapons, but in doing so, you have fresh ones. Yes, more in stock. <laughs> okay. There you go. Oh, right, okay. Change of plan. Ooh, pow. Is that the end? It's gotta be. Hmm, 999 seconds. Not long after the development of Mega Titan for the Mega Drive was finished, Kaiko approached Rainbow Arts and asked to develop their own version of the third game of the, the Liga. However, the development of this version did not get far and was stopped after a short time. Efforts on the third Amiga version were once again restarted. This time, as the conversion of Mega Tarkin was still an unpublished title for the Mega Drive Genesis. The programming was done by Peter Fioroff of Neon Studios, formerly of Keiko. This port of Amiga rebranded as Tarkin 3, replacing the Roman numerals for that previous Factor 5 project was assigned was released in Europe in autumn 1993 by Rainbow Arts and Renegade Software, even before the original version of Mega Drive could find a publishing company for any region. Right. Life. Like that. Considering I've never actually got this far, I'm doing well for lights. I have lost quite a few though. Right. 
Nein! I'm not really collecting a lot of... Whoa! Not really collecting a lot of diamonds! But it's telling me where to go. And that, I definitely approve of. Energy's rubbish. Look at that. Close to death. The boss battle now will be deadly. Chased by an alien for a long period of time. Like a dog chasing a bone. Nice. Alright, oh, it says down, but is there going to be anything up here? Oh, poo. Now, when you're in this form, you are actually invincible. But it only lasts. So that white bar disappears. And because it's very, very slopey going downwards, I'm going to keep using this. But once that white bar below your energy bar goes, and you can't use it anymore. Again, different from other versions. Right, what is stuck on my face? Right, it's worn off, so it doesn't go on foot. Energy, yes. Power. Oh, nice. Some guys are quite easy to find. I love the fact it's telling me where to go. Quite often, too. It's on my face! Captain might have an alien burst up his chest in a few hours' time. The main differences between the Mega Drive and the Mega versions are graphics and sound. Notably, the graphical departure of the original Mega Drive version was comprised in the porting process of the Amiga, resulting in slight loss of colour, some missing backgrounds, and the general lacking of animations and graphical effects. The music and sound effects were ported to the Amiga sound capabilities with readjustments in various track compositions that being made in the process. Not many changes, additions or cuts were done in the gameplay and level design apart from the secret level in the initial world of Mega Tarkin becoming a regular level in Tarkin 3 as if the user of the Amiga uses a one button joypad or joystick they have to restore the additional jumping method back to the, up to the directional up and having to hold the fire button in order to use the grappling hook. There we go. Right, it's still telling me where to go. In general terms, aside from specific versions differences, the game features similar levels compared to the original Mega Titan games, but compensates these with many new effects and graphical improvements and a major focus on shooting action. The lighting, lightning whip from the first two games is gone and is replaced by a physics driven grappling hook used to reach higher grounds in a similar fashion to games like Bionic Commando. Right, look at my energy. Versions were considered by Rainbow Arts for PC, MS and Acon Archimedes with the tentative release date of Summer 904, but neither of them were ever released. Okay, 613 seconds remaining. Still a lot to do, I guess. No. So much going on here. We are invincible at the moment of time. And we've reached the bottom. know what level I'm on now. I absolutely have no idea. I know it's level 3. What part of level 3? I have no idea. Okay. Multiple is really good. However, it's not overly strong. It's not, definitely not as strong as the laser. It's literally blew up that person's brain. And his. Ooh. Right, this has got to be boss battle territory. Look at this. Superb artwork. Right, platform is moving. A lot. 
Very similar to the tail, I suppose, in our time, I guess, in a way. Right, shoot him in the jaw. Oh my lord. Great artwork. There you go, his head exploded! Lots of gems! All converted into points. 67,250. And I had 499 seconds remaining, and we got 9 lives. Diamonds collected, 274, and I missed 223. Lives collected, 8, missed 5. Okay, we're still going. Now I've heard this tune quite a lot. This is a brilliant track. We've got to be close to end of game territory now. Right, we have... These great big nuts and bolts. Right. This might be turned to a long play, I don't know, but I will do a proper long play in the future. Yeah, I've seen this bit before. Superb. Sounds superb. I still think Tarkin 1 is the most difficult of the three that I've played on the media. I mean, this does have some very, very challenging sections, but it is very, very generous. I mean, they all are with their lives. But I don't seem to be running out of time as much in this version as it was in 1-2. I've got a feeling I've got to be in the middle. Oh, I found a floor. But then it is on a prayer belt. Which means we've got to keep jumping. Like on a pogo stick. Oh, we are definitely not on a pogo stick. In the centre, yes, it's going to be easier in its ways, but you're not on a moving platform. Hey, whoa! Let me go. Let me go once again. So nice, you can jump on their heads. Killed by a great big nut. Right. Another life. Ooh. Eleven lives. That is a brilliant achievement. For someone that's never got this far. Another boss. Oh, you look at this. Amazing artwork once again. Make my day. Right, where's his weakness? Oh, okay. I don't know where I'm supposed to shoot. Mind you, the homing missiles are doing me a great big favour, possibly finding its weakness for me. However, it's not flashing, it's not making any sound. I've got a funny feeling my homing bullet's going to do all the work here. Okay. This is where you want the multiple, or the rebounds. But the power! I think I... Yeah, I think my homing bullets did all that work! On we go. Eleven lives. Right, shield, I have that. Brilliant. Nowhere. Right, the only way is up, baby! Trouble is, there's enemies up there. Ugh. Right, this is quite challenging. We've got to try and use the plasma rope while avoiding getting shot. The problem is, up there, there is enemies and fire. 
not heard the end. It's not done yet. We've got to go up. Right, can you shoot these guns? Yes, you can. Right, that definitely makes it easier. I don't have the right weapon for the job. What I need is a pretty powered up laser. Right, that should make it a lot easier, Jamie. Okay. Alright, I'm just getting into the swing of things now. See what I did there? Oh, dear, oh, Lord. Ah! Oh, that is difficult to do. That is difficult to do. Oh, my Lord. Right, that bowling ball pushed me off the wall. Oh, right, okay, I've seen this before. You know what? I think we're close to the end of the game. I really do think so. Oh my lord. Ah! Okay, I have seen this before. I've seen it on YouTube. Ah, but this is the first time I've attempted it. Again, yeah, I don't know where the weakness is. Blimey. Watch out for the dead when it falls from the ceiling. <laughs> peek boo I see you! I hit you with a smart bomb. <laughs> oh, okay, gotta watch out for his hands as well. Okay, I've run out of smart bombs. That'll work. That'll work! Go. Energy's not good though. Right, okay, final boss, baby. Oh dear. I've got nine life, surely no, eight life, surely this isn't bad. We are invincible in the energy ball, which is proving quite difficult to do. There we go. I don't know if I've got the right weapon for this. Yes, it is shooting him up, but I think a laser or a multiple is what I desperately need right now. Again, the weapon is absolutely terrible. This is not the weapon you want for a boss like this. So, but every time you die, I guess it's bad you lose a life, but it actually respawns your smart bombs. And that is saving my bacon at the moment. There we go! Diamonds collected, 24, miss 91. Lives collected, 2, miss 6. 129,634. I've done it! I can't believe it! Blimey! What a game!
there you go, I cannot believe I just done that. However, I didn't beat the high score though. That is a completion. There you go, fantastic. Anyway guys, this is a tremendous game. I'm absolutely over the moon with it. This is Jamie for this game. I've just completed Tarkin 3. Please like this comment, please share. Please subscribe to my channel, visit the fan page, please channel some Twitch to start with more this games you find it fairly easy. And please remember to click the bell icon that will notify you if you upload fantastic. Not the detailed videos, I do special long plays about cheats, how I be making, and live streams on your Friday night, you can time with 8 o'clock, hello week. Till next time, TV. Bye bye, see ya. Okay, this other game is, is Mega No, Jamie. Well it is technically Mega Tarakan, but this is not Mega Tarakan we're playing today. The reason why it's not Mega Tarakan is because this is on an Amiga. However, despite not being the original, the bigger version was the first of the first, the first of the first. Uh, the first of the first, the first of the first. Oh my lord, Jamie. The game of the Tarkin series was initially designed for the bigger Drive Genesis, a later upon the put Voted by Kaiko and Neon Studios under the name of Tuck. I can't cut the button. I was going to say Mega Drive Genesis, and later followed by an Amiga port converted by Kaiko and Neon Studios under the title of Terminator. Terminator? Jamie, Terminator is actually a longer word to say. Converted by Kaiko and Neon Studios under the title of Terminator. Said it again. Jamie, this is not. Jamie, this is not Terminator. This is